What's going on, as you can see here, state is not my friend. That's what I always say, man. Um, state ain't your friend. These politicians ain't your friend. The government is not your friend. That's first and foremost. If you don't know who this is, my name is Che. This is the No Spoon Podcast. I thank you guys for coming on to my channel. Before we begin, subscribe to the channel because you're going to get content every single week. Every day I'm putting something out there. Every day you're going to get more and more content. We're talking about real life stuff. We're talking about things that, you know, pertain to you, pertain to, um, you know, real life things that's going on that people are afraid to talk about in the mainstream media. So this is what this channel is all about. So if you ain't subscribed, do so right now. Smash that like button, share it, get this out to as many people as possible. I'm not putting out a live show this week. I usually do a live show. Things got hectic with work and everything like that. Um, but you guys can still show your support by liking this sharing it subscribing it like i said also if you want to support any type of monetary leaders the cash out there at the bottom follow me on all social media platforms uh you see it right down there at the bottom and if you want to check get a shirt like this right it got the logo on the back um if you want to get a shirt like this the state is not my friend just email me at the email you see going down there at the bottom red pill chat the notes podcast.com and then we'll correspond and i'll be able to get you one of these shirts man because uh this is a new this is the thing man the state's not your friend you gotta let people know because there's so many people walking around nowadays like man the state is their friend the government's their friend they're there to help you don't worry about it we just vote for this person everything's gonna change man that's not how it goes real power comes from us it comes from the people it comes from the ground roots from the ground up from the grassroots all that you know what i mean so that's what we're talking about here at the no school podcast but just gonna do this little reaction video to some things that happened this week and it kind of goes hand in hand with what we've been talking about um with hip-hop as most of you guys know um i did a video on pmb rock i did a couple videos actually on the whole murder situation with pmb rock getting gunned down right here at roscoe's in la right and i just kind of gave you my thoughts on what i you know what i thought about like everybody has said man like what is you doing at that roscoe's that particular one on manchester maine the south central on the east side of south central like one of the worst places that you can go and so everybody was saying that like why is somebody first of all you're not even from here you're from philadelphia right and then you come out here to la and then you want to go eat it all of all the roscoe's you can go to there's one in hollywood there's one over there um in inglewood like the lax area which is way better than one off of pico like there's one in anaheim there's so many different ones you could have went to that was away from all the nonsense but you went to the one on manchester and maine like that is the worst one people from la people i've never been to that roscoe's and i don't know people that go to that roscoe's right because it's just too it's the whole situation with the parking lot and and i've already touched on that like how ridiculous that is and how many other videos people have been put out there and talking about how ridiculous that is but um that's where he went now this happened on a monday um uh, the the friday before i did a live episode where i interviewed uh curtis schoon of schoon tv and we talked about hip-hop and how hip-hop you know the industry was selling a lifestyle they were selling a criminal lifestyle and we were talking about how it promotes um you know it just promotes a lot of negativity especially coming within the industry executives within the industry all that like there's there's so much negativity coming from that and we talked about this on friday and then look what happened on monday but i want to play a clip from you from that episode um that i was sharing with schoon and just kind of um just so you can see because this happened a few days before so i'm gonna go ahead and play this and then um i'll react to it in a second here. where the criminal element is not only not only allowed but it's celebrated the more criminal you are the more clout you have right and so and a lot of it goes ties back to what I call what is gang culture, right? This is the only really industry where being a gang member is actually okay. It's it's not not only is it okay, but it actually gives you a higher status. And so when 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 I look at when I look at it, I don't really look at hip hop as being at any particular race. I look at it being more of it's a reflection of gang culture. And I think we said this. Uh, um, I don't know if it was you and I was talking or I was talking to somebody, but I was saying, you know, 
the 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 rappers i mean the gang members want to be around the rappers for the opportunities that they provide you're not going to get the opportunities that you know if you have a rapper in your neighborhood like a nipsey hustle right nipsey hustle provided uh women uh touring cars that things that these guys never had access to but yet a rapper he needs the gang members for the validation because it makes it real and that's what we always talk about you hear in hip-hop are you real are you real is he a real one is he really is he really about that life that and so what it really reflects is gang culture i mean that's it that's what we were talking about this is a few days before he got he got killed and i, I feel like i mean this kind of validates it like why are you there it's, it's a representation of really like gang culture everything that you find in gang culture you can find in hip-hop you see later on like people talking about you need to check in i think there was a rapper he's not really a known rapper um a, a, a southerner that was talking about if you come to la check in with some solid homies you know because streets are dangerous and this and that and then even steven jackson the, the um basketball player ex-basketball player the host of the uh up and smoke podcast he was saying like I check in everywhere I go. That's like some gang stuff, man. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if you go in and just doing business, no reason to check in. Now, people check in because they go to certain parts. Like, you go to certain areas where if you don't know somebody, people are going to be kind of like, who are you? You know what I mean? Like, if you go to the projects or you go to certain areas, like, yeah, they're going to be like, who are you? Like, what are you doing here? Especially if you have no business being there. And then if you're wearing jewelry and you pulling up in the Maybach and 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 ask you know like range rovers and all that stuff i think you should you should probably know somebody there just so it i don't know it don't look some type of way but that's what they're talking about and so that's all gang like like that's all like gang related stuff man you know what i mean like check in with your homies to see what's going on but but you know I think there's just a mentality, and and I'm gonna just play this other clip from PNB Rock. He was on a, a podcast with DJ Academics, and we all seen the one where he was talking about, um, you know, how he almost got robbed before while he was in LA. But then this one, it, it kind of talks a little bit, you know, he kind of gets into to some other stuff as far as like how he was, like how he moved and why he wanted to go to certain areas and be around certain things. Like, and this is what I'm saying, like. In the in 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 the gang culture and in the in the hip hop culture is kind of the same thing. Like it's 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 sense to prove to who you are and prove that you're real. Like that's what he what I was saying in that clip right there was was like the gang members they want to be around the rappers because of the of the opportunities that they provide. Because you're not many there's not too many opportunities in the in where they live and where they come from. But the rappers give that opportunity but the rappers need to be around the gang members they need to be around the real street guys because they're selling a criminal lifestyle that's what they're selling and they need to authenticate it and you authenticate it by actually being there like nobody's gonna buy your stuff and nobody wants to hear it. and most of the people that are listening to it that are buying it they're not even wrapped up in that lifestyle themselves so it's almost like why you know you're trying to prove to people who aren't even around there like here look this is real so you go to the real ones and you try to be like, you know, try to be like them. But in this video, he talks about like how he had met some gang members out here in L.A. And they were telling him to come to the hood, come to the hood, to their hood, whatever it was. And you'll see the video right now. I'm going to play it right now and then we'll, we'll top it up about it. Yeah, like, yeah. they was just like, yeah, come to the hood. You feel me? Like, come oh, up to, the hood. Come to the hood. I went to the hood. You, you feel me? With all, with strapped up. You feel me? Like, I went with my niggas. Like, it was like three of us. We wasn't crazy Why? deep. Because I just be wanting niggas to know, like, Nigga, I'm like, y'all. I'm, I'm just like, y'all, bro. You feel me? Like, I'm just like you. I came from the trenches. And I want niggas to, like, I, I don't know yeah, why I used to be it's like that. that. It's that respect right It's there. like, yeah, I don't, I don't know why I used to always have that. Like, everywhere I go, I wanted to touch the hood. Like, 
And it's also to kind of let them know, like, yo, y'all built from the same type. Because, yeah, because sometimes people, they'll judge off, they'll think that, oh, it's only niggas that come from where we at built yeah, like this. And yeah, no kizzy. You, so when they seen that, though, them niggas respect the hand. Yeah. They like, oh, no, this nigga PNB coming different. You know how many niggas that we didn't ex had the same conversation with and told them to pull up to the block? And yeah. them niggas said they was going to come to the block. Them niggas ain't coming never. Them niggas ain't never. Them niggas never pulled up. Two weeks up. ago. <laughs> yeah, Roddy Rich said the same shit when I pulled up the Roddy Rich projects. Two different times before Roddy Rich was even like yeah. super heavy. It was like, damn, bro, you just came out here. Like, it was just me and him. Me and him went to the projects. He like, bro, like, you, want one? you ain't got no security or none of that shit. Tripping? And it's like, bro, I got security, but I don't got security. You feel me? Like, yeah, 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 I be yeah. on my shit too. You feel me? So I be on angles. I'm already watching everything that's going on. So it's going to be kind of hard for you to get me because I used to do the same shit. That's crazy how he says it's going to be kind of hard to get him, right? But I mean, I think, like, man, like, so I'm gonna say some things, and I don't think it's it's, it's it's really been touched upon, and I'm not I'm not gonna knock what he said, right? It's it kind of goes like I've been saying that, like people feel like they have to be prove themselves within this culture, right? You have to feel like you know I'm I'm a real one. I'll go around here. I'll touch these different areas. I'm not scared. I'm this and that. And and here's the thing, man, like. I don't think that that's necessarily a bad thing. And I know there's going to be people who be like, what do you mean? Like, you know, when you look at like gang culture, man, and, and gang banging, um, I really believe that it's just a, it's hyper masculinity, right? It's a bunch of people, a bunch of males that really don't know how to use their masculine energy in the proper way and so they're trying to find an outlet for it in some way shape or form and it comes out kind of perverted and when it comes out perverted this is what you get males trying to posture on each other trying to show who's really about this and who's really hard and who's really you know who's really real who's tough they flexing on each other right and it leads to these egos that clash and they have this type of like you know it's a false sense of masculinity it's a false sense of security that feels like i always have to prove my manhood to the next man right and i think that's kind of what happens when people don't when men males don't know how to use their masculine energy because they weren't raised in a masculine way let me read this sec I'm gonna, I'm gonna just read this paragraph from this book if you haven't checked this book out the way of superior man by david d i think that's how you say his name but um this this section of this book right here this this paragraph it's in the introduction man it's it's so like this is really what it is and this is why you see with males and men like it's our nature to kind of be like this right this is our nature to be like this so i'm gonna read this for you real quick the quote unquote mission i say quote because he put it in quotations the mission or the search for freedom is the priority of the masculine whereas the search for love is the priority of the feminine this is why people with masculine essences would rather watch a football game or boxing match on TV than a love story. Sports are all about achieving freedom, such as by breaking free of your opponent's tackle or barrage of punches, and about succeeding at your mission by carrying the ball into the end zone or remaining standing after 10 rounds. For the masculine, mission, competition, and putting it all on the line, indeed, and facing death, are all forms of ecstasy. Witness the masculine popularity of war stories, dangerous heroism, and sports playoffs. That's our nature as men. Like we we are competitive. We want we have that that desire to put ourselves on the front line. We're providers and protectors above all else. That's our nature. It doesn't matter what society wants to put out there. And I know society today is bent on taking that away from men. They're, they, they want 
And there's an agenda behind that and there's a reason behind that. And that's a whole different video. I'll get into it at another time. But having weak men that are outside of their nature, that don't want to step up to the plate and go to those front lines and be that provider and protector. You gotta remember, this is something that is innate and it's primal because it's part of who we are. Look at how our ancestors in primitive times, how they lived. They had to deal with other warring tribes. They had to deal with animals that were that were trying to kill their young and kill the women. They're trying to, that are going after the weakest elements of their of their tribe, of their clan, of their, of their society, right? Somebody had to be the strong ones and say, I'll go out there and I'll face that, I'll face that imminent danger. That was the men. That's what the men were about. That's what the men were for. Provide and protect. They had to show themselves to be strong. Women weren't going to mate with you and have children with you and start and have a family be if they felt like you were weak and you weren't going to be able to protect them. So we still have that within us. Like, I don't care what you do and what society tries to put out there. You're not going to get rid of it. That's who we are, right? So we still have those instincts. And I think that when, you, when it comes to that, like, gang culture, hip hop culture, all that is, is, is a very, it's a masculine based, but I say that it's hyper masculine in the sense that it's it's been perverted because a lot of the men that are in those cultures, gang culture and hip hop culture and everything like that, right? They didn't have the proper upbringing in a masculine way. Most were raised in single parent households where the mother was the dominant one and they were getting a feminine upbringing, but they still wanted to be masculine. And I think it's almost to the point where because you didn't have that father figure, because you didn't have that, 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 that figure in their lives to show them the proper way to be a man, it's like, I want to prove it every single day. I'm not scared to go over there. I'm not scared to go to the hood. What? I, oh, you took, you got, you called me, hey, come to the hood. I'm in a whole different city. I'm not scared. And now, and I'm trying to represent the city where I'm from. So PNB Rock is from Philadelphia. And in the clip, he was talking about going to a, a housing project in Watts, which is 3,000 miles away, but I'm not going to show that we're scared over here. We're just as masculine. We're just as strong as you guys are. That's kind of what we, you know, what you've seen going on right there. Like, it's a, it's, it's a masculinity that has been perverted because it wasn't raised by properly masculine men. It's raised primarily by feminine women. And so you have men who are trying to prove their masculinity. And this is where the whole gang stuff comes in, like, like in 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 a lot of cultures um, prior to the Western civilization, and everything like that. Like a lot of cultures had rite of passages, where boys went through a rite of passage, almost like a, a ceremony, to become men, to prove themselves to the tribe, prove themselves to their to to their people that they were worthy of being warriors and defending the tribe, and that they would not allow anything to happen to them. And so they had to go through certain tests. Right? They had to test themselves. They had to be proven. The elders, the elder men had to approve them and say, look, he's ready. He's re like, if a threat comes, he's going to stand his ground. He's going to protect. He's going to protect the women and the children. That was, it was to show everybody like, look, he's ready to go. He can be a man. And when you don't, when you look at gang culture, right? What happens when you get into a gang and you get put on a gang? You got to get jumped in. So they jump you in, they beat you up for however many seconds, three, four people beat, and it's to prove that you're not going to be scared. That when it's time, when, when it's time to stand in front of the enemy, whether it be on the streets or in jail, you're going to stand your ground and you're going to be able to protect and defend your neighborhood. It's the same type of thing. So I, when I look, when I hear what he's saying, like, I always want to go over there. Like, I understand that because as a man... That's how you want to be. When I was talking, I, I, I had talked to Schoon on a different interview on his on his podcast. This is like a year ago or so, a little over a year ago. We had talked about that, like I, that, like I, like that's a man's nature. That's who we are, and that's why we gravitate to these type of things as men, right? As young boys, we want to see, we see that we see the older the older dudes, the OGs, whatever like that. We see them out there, and I like I'm not scared. I'll go out there. 
you know, there's a, there's a saying out here in the gang culture where it said you jump off the porch. Like, you got out from the safety of the house and you went out there into the streets and you proved yourself out there in the streets. And that's what we're seeing today. Like, we're seeing that men or these young boys, they don't have a proper outlet. So they want to prove themselves. So they go out there into the streets and they prove themselves out there into the streets. Right. And so it's the same type. Like, I feel like even today, like as as I was growing up as, as a young kid, like I was always trying to be around the men like my father, my grandfather, my uncles. Right. If they were outside working on the, in the yard, I was expected to go out there, too. You know what I mean? If there was a threat out to our family, I was expected to go out there, too. And even to this day, like if I'm with you and I'm you're my friend or, you know, we're together in some type of way and something's happening to you, I wouldn't just be like, oh, man, they jumping that dot line. You know what I'm saying? Oh, look at him. Man, I hope he's okay. Like, no, I'm going to go out there. If if, if it's my family, if somebody's in danger of being hurt, I'm going to go out there. Like, I can't just sit, sit in the house while something like that's going on. Like, that's just not in my nature. And that's not in the nature of men. And so what happens is like this, like I said, this gang culture, which hip hop is a reflection of, like that's the same type of thing. It's just been perverted. And until we give, we have real men that have decided to 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 take control of their masculinity and be in their proper nature as a man and then teach the next generation and we can start giving them proper outlets there'll be a time to fight there'll be a time to defend there'll be a time to be a warrior but sometimes in in this day and age being a warrior mean can mean something different you know what i'm saying like going out there and providing building businesses building community you know what i'm saying like getting rid of these guys that are terrorizing communities because a lot of these guys that are hyper masculine and are putting it in the wrong direction they're the problems right this week the suspected killers of pmb rock were arrested right freddie lee Trone, who's 40 years old was arrested count of uh, first degree murder robbery i think two counts of second degree robbery and the count of robbery well look it wasn't just him he was the get the getaway driver that's what they say his wife was also involved she was arrested as a as, as, a, as an accomplice but the shooter the alleged shooter of pmb rock was freddie lee trones 17 year old son that he shot him multiple times and went in there and robbed him for his jewelry and shot him multiple times like this is what i'm talking about it's a perverted masculinity this was the guy's father this is who he was he was depending on this guy this man this male say he was depending on him to show him the right path towards being a man and he led them down a perverted path i don't know freddie lee trone i don't know i don't know his situation i'm going to assume that he probably didn't have the best of upbringing if that's the type of you know if that's the type of path he leads his own son on but that's what happens when you have a generation that doesn't know how to be men. That's crazy, man. And that's sad. It's sad because a, man, the, the, uh, a 30-year-old father, uh, PMB Rock, is dead. Promising career. You know. From what all accounts, he used his career to kind of change his life. I heard he was in jail. You know what I'm saying? He was out there in the streets. Now he used this to kind of make a better life for himself, for his daughter. He's dead. He's not coming back. His little girl got to grow up without a father. You know, and who knows, like, well, how that's going to spiral in her life. See what I'm saying? And then Freddie Lee Trone, he's gone. His son, he's done. Like, you know, you just generation after generation is just being destroyed because people don't know how to be who they're supposed to be we don't know our essence we don't know our purpose and we don't know how to channel those things in the proper direction it's a sad state of affairs man um it really is but um that's just kind of my reaction to it that's kind of my little two cents in the whole you know the whole situation 
Um, I appreciate you guys for watching this all the way through. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so now. I'm going to be bringing more stuff like this. You know, my agenda is, is simple, man. Like, I'm trying to bring, um, turn people's minds onto a new way of thinking, man, because there's too many Freddie Lee Trones and there's too many sons of Freddie Lee Trones out there, right? There's too many PNB rocks out there. That all they trying to do is be who they be, live in their nature, live in their essence, but they doing it in the wrong and perverted way. And in my experiences, and um, I'm just trying to use that to try to educate and enlighten people. You know what I'm saying? I think that we have too many um, opportunists and grifters out there that want to lead you down to a certain place to give other people power. The state is not my friend. That's why I wear this, right? Because it's not not my friend they just want to give you free stuff so that you keep them in power and keep you powerless so that you keep voting for them you keep donating to them you keep giving them all these different extras and relinquishing your own personal power the the, the individual you yourself you are your savior right we don't need none of that the power is with us that's, that's why the state's not my friend i understand that i realize that i put that work in to to break free of that and it starts here, right? So I appreciate I appreciate everybody for watching this. Um, subscribe to the channel, um, like, share. You know what I'm saying? Do all that you need to do to get this out there to as many people. And I'll bring way more content and keep 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 tapped in because man, it's going to keep coming. And this don't stop. Che here, no smooth podcast.